Yeah, listen, I, I agree with you. Um, I, I, I think one of the most consequential shifts we've seen in the last decade politically, and in fact, probably the most consequential shift, is I think the Republican Party has become the party of blue collar workers. We are the party of truck drivers and steel workers and railroad workers. And, and if you look at what, ha what has happened here, uh, the Biden White House has screwed this up monumentally from the, from the outset. J just a few weeks ago, Joe Biden was telling the American people he'd resolved it, a rail strike was averted. And we now know that he was, he was deliberately misleading the American people, that what he had done was kicked the can down the road to get past election day. It was, it was reminiscent uh, of what Biden did with Saudi Arabia, asking them to delay their output uh, restrictions until after election day. It was all about confusing the voters. And so now we're facing the potential of a railroad strike. A railroad strike would be catastrophic. The cost of the economy would be over $2 billion a day. Nobody wants to see that happen. But unfortunately, what Biden and the Democrats have decided to do is simply squash the demand of the railroad workers. The railroad workers voted on this agreement and a majority of the workers said no, they didn't like the agreement. And yet the Biden White House is saying to those, those workers, we don't care what you think. We're going to force the result that, that we want anyway. I, I think that's a real mistake. You know, um, this goes back to Ronald Reagan and Jack Kemp when I was a child and learned a lot about the political economy. The workers, the blue collar workers, I, and all workers, they didn't create the inflation. Government created the inflation. Yep. Spending and money printing and taxing and over regulating. So in this case, I'm sort of hearkening back to that. I mean, seven paid sick day leave doesn't sound like an awful thing. They are getting good wages, but inflation is drowning out the wages. So I'm just saying, at this juncture, I don't really feel like blaming the workers. Everybody, private unions and their leadership, uh, the leadership may be a bunch of socialists. I don't know anything about that in this case. But I'm just saying, why point the finger at the worker all the time? Why not give them a break? Yeah, listen, the, the talking point uh, for management here is that there's a 24% pay increase over five years. That sounds good until you reflect on the fact that under Joe Biden, inflation is over 8%, which right. means this agreement has, has the union wages rising at about half the rate mm -hmm. of inflation. That, mm -hmm. that, that is effectively a pay cut for workers. And, and their demand here is not even more money. As you noted, it, it, it's having sick leave. And, and right now, their existing contracts, as I understand it, they have to put in multiple days in advance before taking sick leave. Now, now Larry, how exactly does that work? If you get sick today, uh, how are you supposed to know three days ahead of time that you're going to get sick today? And, and so it, the whole point of sick leave is, you know, if, if you're sick, you've you got to be able to, to respond to what you, you've got right then. And so looking at the demands of the workers, I think on the face that, that they seem quite reasonable and yet why is the Biden White House, why are Pelosi and Schumer stepping in to squash the workers' demands? I think the reason is because the Biden White House screws, screwed this up, and they're now on the precipice of disaster, disaster that they caused. You think um, the Cornyn-Sanders uh, bill, you're a co-sponsor of that bill, you think you'll get a vote on that? Do you think it might pass? Do you think the Senate will give them uh, the sick leave? You know, I don't know how this is going to play out right now. Schumer, who's the majority leader, is, is keeping his cards very close to the vest, so we don't know exactly how he's going to tee up the vote. I think it's likely that we'll see votes tomorrow on this, but at this point, Schumer has not told us. Um, I think the objective here should be, number one, to avert a rail strike, but number two, not to step in and have the federal government bigfoot the workers right. and say it doesn't matter. You know, in the great state of Texas, there are over 17,000 freight rail workers. There, there's no state in the union with more freight rail, rail workers than, than Texas. And, and I don't think that, that Congress should step in and say it doesn't matter what you workers want. We've decided that, that the answer is no. I think that's a real mistake. But yet that's where the Biden White House is.